tonight on a special episode of Vanity and Combs. We have exclusive interviews with Roger Chillingworth, the husband of Hester Prynne, who committed adultery against her husband, and Reverend Arthur Dimsdale, the man whom Mrs. Prynne had the affair with. And what a night it will be. I'm Sean Vanity. And I'm Alan Combs, and we're here in the studio with special guests Leech Roger Chillingworth and Reverend Arthur Dimsdale. Now we have with us in the studio, Miss Prynne's husband and physician, Roger Chillingworth. He has kindly agreed to share with us his thoughts on this issue and what Miss Prynne's actions mean. Mr. Chillingworth, not many men would have stayed married if there were ten affairs. What allowed you to forgive Mrs. Prynne? Well, Sean, that every morning I have risen that every breath that I have taken, that every moment I have spent within the company of Dimsdale hath brought me closer to owning his foul soul. Such passion. He hath done a terrible sin upon my wife, and I would have it no other way than to take his life within my practice hands and be the judge of his brokenness. Very admirable that you can forgive Pastor, but I don't especially agree with your policy concerning Arthur about owning his soul. Yes, I have to agree with Sean, and I have to say, so do most of the people of Boston. Mr. Chillingworth, there are a lot of townspeople that seem to dislike you for your actions toward Reverend Dimsdale. How do you feel about this? Let them, I say. They have petty opinions that are of no consequence to my own goal. What consequence is there in some crowding of? All that matters to me is Dimsdale, and what I have this soul in my cold and dark and grave. I would see, perhaps, Dimsdale rot in hell for what he hath done to me, even if it consumes my own. Incredible. That's just incredible. You said it, Alan. Now I'd like to wrap this up with one final question. What do you think would stop you from achieving your goal? If you were asking that I, Roger Chillingworth, would commit murder in order to achieve my victory, I would not. I would not commit a sin to cause him to reveal his own sin, so that I may view it for my own pleasure, but I would no other obstacle hinder me from reaching my superior goal of determination of his Okay, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for being here tonight, and your time is very much appreciated. Coming up, we get an exclusive in-studio interview who, with, the, with the man who Hester Prynne had an affair with, uh, yeah, Reverend Arthur, Arthur Dimsdale. Dimsdale. Yeah. This program has been brought to you by Wheelbarrow Warriors. Wheelbarrow Warriors, for all your Wheelbarrow Warrior needs. Welcome back to Vanity and Combs. I'm your host, Sean Vanity, with my partner, Alan Combs. And we're here in the studio with Reverend Arthur Dimsdale, who had an affair with Hester Prynne. Good evening, Mr. Dimsdale. Good evening. It does give me great pleasure to be here on this lovely evening. I'd like to start off this interview with another internet question from Arnold Schwarzenegger of Sacramento, California. Mr. Schwarzenegger asked, Many of you have noticed that your health is deteriorating, but you never tell them why. What is, is the real reason that you appear so aged in the age? That evil Mr. Chillingworth hath been so terrible to me. He hath been a tyrant upon my soul, and he hath invaded my privacy and tranquility. Mm. Therefore, my health, health hath diminished to that of a very aged old man. Mr. Chillingworth, or Mr. Chillingworth doth threat, frighten me so. Mr. Dimsdale, it sounds like Mr. Chittenworth has put you through a lot of trauma. Yes, I'd have to agree with you on that one, Sean. Now I'd like to ask another question. Mr. Dimsdale, you all know that you love your daughter Pearl, but there was a time when she did not accept you. How did you feel about this? Yes, please, tell the audience. It doth disappoint my heart that I could not have played a greater role in raising my child. She doth mean a lot to me, and it doth make me sad that there was a time that she did not accept me as her as father. It doth also tear my soul apart that I could not have spent more time with my precious daughter before my death. Nevertheless, I am glad for the times when she could accept me for who I am and what I have done. Well, I am glad to see that you can place such high value on your daughter, Mr. Dimsdale, a valuable trait of any father. Yes, I agree. Now I'd like to wrap up tonight's show with one final inquiry of the Reverend, Mr. Dimsdale. Why do you suppose Mr. Chillingworth is so determined to take revenge upon him for his death? He's so much furious with me. Furious? Furious? How furious? Very furious. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being the least furious and 10 being the most furious, how furious would you say he is? Nine and a half. Nine. Okay. Continue on. 
with me for even committing adultery, but methinks there are other reasons. Hester hath only met me months following her arrival, and she hath been with Chillingworth for a much longer time. And Chillingworth's soul is envious of my successes with Hester, and he would not ignore this matter. He would that my soul shall burn and rot in the burning lake of sulfur with Satan himself. He is willing to shower Hester with forgiveness, but he is determined to take revenge upon me. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. Reverend, thank you again for your time. Thank you, Mr. Dimsdale. This has been a special episode of Vanity and Combs. Reminding you, Palin is going down. Good night. My fellow Americans, like me, these guys, uh, messed up a lot. So, be sure to check out the, uh, what are they called, uh, bloopers, and even alternate endings, which have never been viewed by any American citizen in the history of this country. I'm George W. Bush, I approve of this message, and I pledge to my fellow Americans that I will find Katrina and end her reign of terror. <laughs>